Okay, fluid electrolytes, take two. So let's talk about your serum electrolytes. The two main ones you want to be concerned about are your sodium and your potassium. Your sodium should be 135 to 145. That's a pretty good range of like 10 points. Your potassium range is just 3.5 to 5. So the potassium is your biggest concern of what to watch for because a slight decrease even down to a 3.0 could be a huge issue versus you know your sodium goes from 135 down to 130 it's not that much of a big deal because it has a wider range so your potassium and sodium are the two main electrolytes you look at but again potassium more concerned so you have your intracellular and your extracellular fluid okay intracellular here's a weird story that I watched from somebody else's a YouTube video that made sense and I kinda changed it a little bit so intracellular fluid has potassium ion, anions and sodium in the cell and they cannot leave the cell. So if you think uh, Annie smokes pot in the house, okay, Annie is your anions, they're smoking pot or you have potassium in your house or in your cell. Um, and it's kind of, it's negative in there because she's smoking in the house. It's not a good thing. Your extracellular fluid, sodium, chloride, potassium, and bicarb are outside of the cell. So uh, the other gal explained it is there's a salt look outside and a chloride pool. Well, chloride cannot, is a negative charge, it cannot go into the cell because the anions are mainly in the cell, they're two negatives, they oppose each other so they can't, chloride could not move into the cells or tissues. And um, intracellular and extracellular fluid are the same, generally, except for in the intravascular, uh, it has proteins. Okay, so sodium, it's essential for your muscle contractions, your nerve impulses, and your fluid volume. It's mostly outside the cell. Um, if sodium concentration is decreased, your kidneys will sense that your sodium's getting low and it's going to release aldosterone. Remember in the previous video, what does aldosterone do? Yeah, it saves sodium. So aldosterone will start saving sodium, collecting sodium, and help get your sodium concentration back up. Um, and remember, in any change in electrolytes, you're going to have a change in mentation in your patient. So if your patient is changing their mentation, starting to get confused, things like that, you really need to um, keep an eye on that. Another thing to know, if your patient is acidotic, his potassium levels are going to be high because hydrogen has moved into the cells and is hiding in the cells and that's making them... Hydrogen makes acidosis basically, so that's something to look at. Um, I also did a video on ABGs, and so make sure you watch that because that will be really helpful.